So let's consider signal power, and we'll, we'll define the signal power of a signal G as being equal to this integral. So the signal power of some signal G, we're going to take the square of that signal, and we're going to integrate from some period, across some period, minus t half to t half, and then we're going to multiply by 1 over t, and then we're going to take the limit as t equals infinity. And this is going to give us a finite number uh, that defines the, the power of a power signal. So let's consider some power signal like this, and this is like the ones we looked at in the first review video. And this signal, uh, it, we don't know what it does, but it just keeps uh, going up and down, and it, it continues from minus infinity all the way to infinity. So if we were to try to just uh, integrate this uh, the normal way using the energy signal method, we'd get an infinite answer. So we're going to instead use this power signal integral, and we're going to change this function. We're going to uh, make a truncated signal, just like this, where we're going to truncate it. So we're just going to cut it off here and here, and we're going to say that above this, uh, above and below, we're equal to zero. And just uh, under this one period, we're going to say that we have a defined function. Now, if we do that, we can see that with this method, we could define the power signal in terms of the energy. So this signal, right, because we've changed it a little bit so that it has a bunch of portions for an infinite amount of time where it's equal to zero, we know that we could get a finite value from the energy signal. Uh, so with our truncated signal, we can take the energy of that signal uh, divide it by a period, and then we can make this go larger and larger. So we can say that this just keeps getting bigger to minus infinity, and this one keeps getting bigger to infinity. And if we were to do that, we can write a power signal uh, in a way that helps us extend our energy signal concept.